Yeah, you know, one thing program news we're pretty proud of, the Big 12's released the academic Hawk Conference, and uh, we only had four guys eligible for it because the league has a rule where I think first-year players or transfers uh, don't qualify or something like that. But the four guys that were uh, eligible for it, Brock, Drew, Ramey, and Jace, all got all Big 12 academics. So uh, super proud of those guys, including guys that have already gotten their undergrad. Some of those guys are working on post-grad stuff, but taking care of business at a high level. Also want to um, introduce, or not introduce, uh, recognize, recognize Kat and all the work she does um, with our players. Is our academic coach. Uh, she's the best I've ever worked with, um, and she's special. And I know our players really benefit from the relationship they have with her and her support of them academically. So congrats to Kat and those four guys for getting that. This week's marketing update, um, you know, only one game left in the Irwin Center where tickets are available. We've got the two games left, uh, but I was told this morning the Baylor game's officially a sellout. Um, Going to have plenty of suits, seats for those students that night, and we'll come up with that uh, a couple days before the game. But the last game to purchase tickets would be tomorrow night's 6 p.m. tip against TCU. So I encourage all fans to, to come out to the Irwin Center, especially if you haven't yet this last season. All sorts of deals going on. I think $10 uh, quality lower level seats are available. They're doing a thing for I think 40 bucks for a family of four that includes uh, concessions, soft drink, water, that whole deal. Um, if it doesn't include soft drink and water and you want soft drink and water, then just send Chris Ogden an email. Augie's email is on the website, and I think he'll personally make sure that you get the soft drink and the water unless you're a um, prospect age fan. And then, of course, the NCAA rules will be involved. Um, so there's marketing. There's the uh, last two games at the uh, Irwin Center. There's the last chance to buy the tickets for tomorrow night's game. And I certainly wanted to um, talk about our academic success. Just all business, man. You don't want to talk about academics or uh, marketing? Straight to basketball. Yeah. It's like my daughters, man, just straight to straight to finances. They don't want to just talk about other things for a little while. Sorry, the ADD is kicking in. What was the question? Have you seen Marcus work since Saturday's game? Um, have I seen him work? How, how, how has he been in the facility, just his attitude, all the different things since Saturday's game? Since early, uh, yeah, same as he always been. That's the definition of a pro. You know, at this level, 31 games, then the postseason. In the NBA, was it still 82 games in a season? Euro League, very similar, so um, can't get too high or too low. I think Marcus would be the first to tell you that uh, we have to have a better performance, better production from him uh, to beat teams in the Big 12. Uh, but the good thing about Marcus is he'll he'll use this and uh, respond. So he's been nothing short of perfect since. Got in the film room the next day, weight rooms, stay the course. Well, first, it's a team sport. So, I mean, everybody's accountable, uh, including myself, the coaches. Anytime you don't get the results you want. Um, but I think, uh, you know, Marcus is one of the best players in college basketball. And with that comes the responsibility to, uh, to own things from time to time. Obviously, he didn't play his best game. A lot of that was self-inflicted. Uh, but the good news for us is those are things he can control and he can fix. Yeah, of course. Uh, it's a great time of year. You know, we're going to actually talk about that today before practice here in a minute. Um, you know, a lot of the things that we um, we set out for as a team, including the number one goal, is right there in front of us. You know, we control our own destiny in a lot of ways. Uh, four meaningful games here left in the regular season as we all position for, um, you know, our seeding in the Big 12 tournament in Kansas City, chance to compete for a championship there, and then certainly uh, March Madness right around the corner. So. Um, I think above all, it's great to kind of be in a great mental place this time of year. Um, I think a lot of teams, the grind can kind of take you over. And some special teams, the grind can kind of springboard you into uh, the best time of year. So um, look, these guys put up with me 
all season long to get to March and have some fun. Um, and I put up with a few of them all year long to get to March to have some fun. So um, I think it's just important that uh, we understand that this is the best time of year and we've got to find that, uh, that positive culture, that joy and you know, that eagerness to go out and play. Yeah, I think uh, you know it's it's recognizable uh, when a team is playing really well, just like it's recognizable when a team uh, is struggling for whatever reason. And so, yeah, no, no doubt about it. Um, I'm on the record from day one saying we want to play our best basketball second half of conference season, and um, is March nears. And so, the last four games are great opportunities. Two more at the Irwin Center. We've already talked about that, and then you know you get to play two of the best teams in the country on the road. If we're going to make a, mar a run in March, we have to beat teams like these next four opponents. Um, so I don't think we could ask for anything more in terms of the opportunity our schedule presents it. Is there a timeline on Trey? No time frame at all. Uh, still just concerned with Trey uh, and the person. And so I uh, really haven't talked much about basketball uh, with him, just making sure that he knows that we support him. Well, I think they're an NCAA tournament team. You know, they got a little bit of work here uh, down the stretch, but they're playing in the best league in college basketball this year, in my opinion, the Big 12. Um, they still control their own destiny in a lot of ways. Um, you know, I don't know what that magical number is. None of us know. We all have ideas, but um, they're an NCAA tournament team in my eyes. And um, we know they'll play great here in Austin. Um, Jamie's teams have always played well here. Um, we've had some great battles with them over the years, obviously in Fort Worth. Um, the game was a lot closer than the scoreboard probably indicated. Uh, we played well in a lot of different areas, uh, but there was also some things in that game uh, that we got to clean up. So, uh, look, it's a late February conference game with a lot on the line for both teams. Um, we look forward to playing TCU. We have a lot of respect for their program. I don't know if I'm prepared to answer that today. I sitting right here in the middle of the season. Um, you know, I, I tell you that uh, most of the structural work and all that was done when we got here. Um, we've been involved in some of the meetings with some branding and things like that, but um, it's going to be first class. Uh, I haven't spent a lot of time over there, but I, I mean, simply stated, the arena is going to be second to none. It's going to be kind of a transcending thing, kind of even hard to compare to anything else. Um, then my view of the practice facility is just going to be very uh, functional. I mean, it's going to be exactly what we need. You know, in that deal, uh, people always talk about recruiting with facilities, but much more important recruiting, I and mean, that's where you do your work. You know, the secret's in the dirt. That's where the dirt is. So um, I just think the access to the location near campus, the ac access to the game day arena, uh, everything that's going to be in the practice facility is going to be Texas standards. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm here to talk about Texas basketball today. Yes. Oh man, let's see. God, somebody asked me that the other day. My mind just started going to other places. Um, let's see here. Did Metallica play here back in the day? Yeah, I think we snuck in on that one. Uh, sorry, Metallica, I owe you probably $39. Um, shout out to Jim Baker, athletic director at UT Arlington. Yeah. 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 And then, it's not, maybe not concert, Josh, your mind, but, uh, you know, I, I know a lot of people of my age and higher still lament UIL being here. Uh, did you come to the, some of the UIL championships they have here at State Tournament? Absolutely. That's my probably my um, I don't know. Best is the word. My my.
biggest or best memory besides Texas basketball. Um, you know, every year coming down here and um, hanging out at Schultz's with all the coaches between the games and coming to the sessions and um, watching some of my great friends coach in those games, um, win state championships in this building. Um, also a lot of heartbreak, you know, some of the losses and stuff. But um, yeah, the state tournament uh, is a special time for all coaches. As a player, you drew a great dream of playing in it. Um, we never quite made it here, uh, my teams, but um, and then as a coach, you just wanted to you wanted to be here. And it was always cool when the players you were recruiting or even signed were playing in the games. Um, I thought Austin did a great job with it. I thought obviously uh, Texas did a great job with it, and then downtown. And, uh, those were special times growing up. Still got napkins and one of my boxes somewhere in some U-Haul storage somewhere, somewhere, I got about five of them around the country. But, uh, you know, I used to draw up plays on napkins in between the games and go to their Schultz's, kind of wait till you saw somebody that had a tab because most of the time I didn't have no money. He has not. Yeah, it's uh, that's more than accurate. You know, opportunity comes in different ways, and um, Dylan's earning opportunity above all through his own performance and through his uh, continued, you know, rehab to get healthy and just working at it. Um, and then obviously with Trey's absence, it creates opportunity for, for players, including Dylan. Um, you know, we just need Dylan to play his best. We need him to find a level of consistency. Uh, we all understand the challenges that he's uh, um, playing under right now. You're talking about a guy that did not have an off season, uh, did not start official practice on time. Um, I think what he might have gotten in one game, but I, just, I literally remember that Stanford game. Uh, which is a big game for us, and we're putting him out there, and he's still on minute restrictions. And uh, you know, it's really hard to play at this level, period. And it's extremely hard to play at this level when you don't have you know the preparation or off season behind you. And uh, Dylan's done nothing uh, short of just great working at it. He's a no excuse guy. Um, we think he's got a lot in him this season. We all understand what the future is going to look like for him, but like right now, four games left, Kansas City, NCAA tournament. Um, I think it's really close to uh, the other night at Oklahoma. You know, I thought he impacted the game in back-to-back -back possessions uh, several times. Um, we see it in practice. This time of year, of course, we're not practicing a lot in terms of reps, uh, which has been another challenge for him. So he's getting a lot of his live play just in individual workouts and things like that. But, uh, but yeah, that's no secret. We, um, you know, we need him to play his best when it matters most. And I have a lot of confidence that he'll do that. His heart's in the right place. He's a really intelligent player. He puts in the work. Um, I think he's really close to, to a breakout game where we'll be up here talking about how great he played. Last one, Jonathan, in the back. Uh, Coach, you mentioned earlier about positive culture. How have you noticed the players are maintaining that culture? How are they Well, the guys have been great. Um, you know, it's a long season. It's a journey uh, this time of year, just like we were talking about earlier. Um, you know, it's just important to kind of find that joy, man. It's right here. It's, you grew up uh, dreaming about playing in March Madness, and and um, we, we we got a lot to play for uh, left. You know, again, these four four games, you couldn't pick four better opportunity games for us. Uh, two at home, two on the road. Kansas City is always the highlight of every of one of every season. One highlight of it, and certainly in March Madness. And um, you know, I've been consistent. I think there's a handful of teams that have a chance to win six games. Um, and I believe we're one of those teams. And I'm not saying it's going to be easy, but I don't think it's easy for anybody. Uh, but I think I don't think anybody, you know, would looks forward to playing Texas in a 40 minute game. Um, so we know what we can do. Um, we know we got to keep working at it. And it's easy to sit up here and talk about it. It's really hard to do. But our guys have been great and we all we understand why we came here. And it's our intention to play our best when it matters most.
You know, more than not, we talk about the next game and we stay focused on the process. But, of course, with a veteran team like this, absolutely we talk about it. We were talking about on the first day of practice, uh, building a resume, what that looks like. Um, you know, if you're going to win the party, uh, you got a better chance going in one of the front doors. And so, um, yeah, the, all that plays into it, absolutely. But sometimes with uh, younger teams and things like that, maybe not as much. But this year's team, um, you know, we don't sit around and think about, Hey, what kind of stuff could we motivate our guys with today? It's truth A, truth B, and truth C. It's just hitting them right between the eyes. Um, and these guys have been great. You know, a veteran locker room in there uh, and some young guys that are, are growing up quickly. Um, but no, we talk a lot about the reality of what's in front of us. The first air shake that I saw was Jimmy Patzos. Y'all remember that one? And uh, I thought it was uh, funny. I think uh, one team got kicked out or something, and he was going down the line. So I remember calling him that night, and there's been a few uh, since then. Um, yeah, I think when we coached in the ABA, some of our opponents uh, didn't have shaking hands as a priority on their list. So um, I've chased a few guys down for a handshake from time to time, and then I've also just watched a couple of guys walk off from time to time. Do you believe it's necessary to do? You know, um, I, I wasn't at that specific game the other day, so that's none of my business. Uh, but what what I have seen is uh, Coach Izzo's statement on on that, um, and I would tend to agree with him. You know, I think it's a part of the game, college basketball and. Uh, sportsmanship and all. I've coached professional basketball in two different settings. I understand that's a different league. Um, in the COVID, we all kind of joked as coaches, we kind of felt like pros just kind of waving at guys, you know. And, um, but I think just in my personal opinion, and that's all it's worth, just my opinion, you ask the question, I'll answer it. Um, I think that's a part of, uh, of college basketball is um, when things don't go your way, you know, Understanding that that's uh, you, you recognize the opponent, um, and sometimes when you when things go your way, you pause for a second. You recognize the opponent too. That's just my personal opinion. I thought Coach Izzo did a good job describing it.